um okay so before we start uh, can you guys just uh, give a brief introduction about yourself like your name what year of uh, you know program are you currently in and like where are you from Hi bro I am Pragdeepshwar Babu from Nagarkoil Nagarkoil okay and what I am Mahendran bro uh, I am intern there okay class one nice uh, are you uh, doing uh, btech chemical engineering or ah yeah, bro uh, btech uh, what year are you currently in final year final year okay good um who's the other person ritu rani Hello. Ah, hello. Uh, yes, sir. Currently, I am doing a job in uh, JK Cement, and I have completed my B.Tech in Chemical Engineering this year only. Okay. okay. Uh, fine. Uh, let's uh, start uh, the today session. Uh, so, I am guessing like. uh you guys must have learned mass transfer right mass transfer and mainly distillation uh, in your uh, btech curriculum and since uh, like ritu has completed i think uh, she must have completed that course as well and pragadesh uh, sorry sir i am hello uh, am i audible uh, yes sir right now you are audible okay uh so like i was asking like if both of you guys have uh, like uh, done the mass transfer course during your curriculum like are you uh, well versed with mass transfer and so on so mainly uh, distillation so like today's uh, you know class will be uh, with respect to distillation and some of the uh, questions uh, which were asked in previous year gate uh, from the distillation part of mass transfer so we'll be looking into distillation fine let's uh... so uh, like how do you guys want me to like proceed like you want me to like give a brief introduction to distillation like the mechabethyl method and so on or shall we just uh, straight away go into the questions because uh, you guys have learned these uh, concepts in your classes sir give some introductions okay fine sounds good thank you sir okay so let me just get the okay uh, i hope my uh, screen is uh, visible to you guys yes fine so today we'll be uh, learning about distillation so distillation by definition it is nothing but a separation process separation process and this separation occurs based on the you know various different uh, properties uh, like can you name a few properties by which uh, you know distillation occurs in in normal process like just take a guess that is fine okay um so distillation mainly occurs based on the difference in the boiling points
boiling points of components in a mixture okay uh, more people are joining Fine. yeah so distillation occurs based on the difference in the boiling points of uh, the different components in a mixture it, uh, you can also say it is due to the vapor pressure or the difference in vapor pressure of these components or you can have another uh, term called as relative volatility so this relative volatility is just a measure of how volatile a component is with respect to another component so for example if we want to find the relative component com, uh, relative volatility between components 1 and 2 we can represent the relative volatility of this components as alpha 1 and by definition the uh, the relative volatility we can find this uh, relative volatility of 1 uh, as y1 by x1 by y2 by x2 so this y1 y2 are the vapor mole fractions of component 1 and 2 and x1 x2 is the liquid mole fraction of component 1 and 2 so in uh, in this formula it is uh, important to note that the component 1 is considered more volatile uh, than the component 2 so usually relative volatility is uh, you know greater than or equal to 1 in most cases fine so yeah this is just uh, uh, you know the basic concept of distillation now in like uh, when it comes to gate and gate syllabus uh, you know there are only a uh, few uh, topics which are like really uh, stressed the important uh, for gate so let's uh, get into that so okay fine now we have learned relative volatility what else when we design a distillation column so you can represent a distillation column like this so we have the fluid here we have a condenser unit from which distillate comes out and then we have a reboiler unit from which the residue comes out so feed is usually represented as f and its composition as xf then distillate is represented as d composition uh, xd and the residue is usually represented as w or in some cases you can even see it represented as b or r so here we'll just go with w and the composition as xw okay so in a distillation column there are a lot of trace inside the columns so there are different types of uh, trace that you can find bubble cap bubble cap and like so on so what this trace do the mass transfer occurs or the separation uh, in the distillation occurs the mass transfer occurs within this trace so uh, like in normal uh, you know uh, application we usually want to find how many number of of trays are required for a given distillation process so this is uh, one of the most sought out problems in distillation part of mass transfer and it is also important uh, when it comes to gate so we can find this number of trays using various methods the most famous method is called the mccabe thiel method then there is a second method called ponson savret 
phones on Savrid. And then there are a lot of formulas, mainly Fensky's equation. And there are a lot of different uh, types of a Fensky's equation as well. You know, you have something called as a Fensky Underwood equation and so on. So these three are the main, uh, you know, uh, ways by which we can calculate the number of trays in a distillation column. Okay, one second. Okay. Um, oh, fine. Now let's get back to our distillation column. So we had the feed F, the condenser on top which gives us our distillate D and the reboiler on the bottom which gives us our residue W and their corresponding compositions are XF, XD and XW. Okay. So I hope uh, you guys know how to write a mass balance. Um, for you know simple systems like you must have learnt it in process calculations as well so can anyone like just say how we can write a simple mass balance of this uh, distillation column okay fine so a simple mass balance of the distillation column you can write it as f is equal to d plus w so whatever comes in goes out so feed is what is coming inside the distillation column and d and w the distillate and the residue are what goes out of the column now we can write a component balance now this component balance is written for the more volatile component Now when we say XF, XD and XW, these mole fractions actually represents the mole fractions of the more volatile component. So if we want to write a component balance in a distillation column, it is nothing but F, XF is equal to D, XD plus W, XW. So this is a component balance. So uh, you know, you can write a uh, similar balance for uh, both the condenser as well as the reboiler as well. So, like let's say, yeah. So when we write, one second. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, so let's say uh, in a condenser. Now this top part is let's say the condenser part. So there is a vapor V that is going into the condenser. Then there is a fraction of this uh, which is a uh, liquid usually which goes back into the distillation column and D is the distillate. So, when we write a condenser balance, it is V is equal to L plus D and similarly we can write a reboiler balance as well. So, let us say, uh, you know, L dash and this is V dash. So, reboiler balance will be L dash is equal to V dash plus W. So these are just simple mass balance equations uh, throughout the distillation column, right. So let us uh, look into the uh, you know few basic assumptions of Maccabay TL method.
so can anyone say what are the different assumptions uh, or some of the assumptions uh, associated with maccabe tail method anyone okay so some of the assumptions let's say so there are no heat loss or heat gain occurring in the distillation column that is it is basically an adiabatic operation then the uh, another uh, assumption is that there is no heat of mixing and then the most important assumption is constant molar heat of vaporization so what this essentially means the third assumption is that let's say n moles of liquid is being vaporized that means n mole of vapor will also be condensed so these are three of the main assumptions uh, in a maccabe tail method so what follows this is just a lot of uh, mass balances and component balances so fine another important thing is that the top part of the distillation is called the rectifying section it can also be called as enriching enriching section and the bottom part of the distillation column is called as the stripping session fine so you uh, based on these mass balances you will have a lot of uh, derivations and um, and it will lead to a lot of general equations so there are uh, two such equations so one is the general equation for the rectifying or the enriching session so this comes from the condenser balance so by condenser balance we had v is equal to l plus d and this is the and when we do the component balance we can write vy is equal to lx plus dxd so we just have to solve these two equations so here what happens is this v is equal to l plus d we can just substitute this v is equal to l plus d into the second equation and by rearranging it we will get the general equation for the enriching section or the rectifying section as y is equal to l by v into x plus d by v into xd fine now uh, let's take a condenser uh, like this so i mentioned that a fraction of uh, this uh, goes back into the distillation system as a vape, uh, liquid so there is a new term here called as reflex ratio and this reflex ratio is nothing but the ratio of liquid that goes inside the distillation column which is l by the uh, distillate, uh, distillate that is going out of the distillation column so this uh, can be represented as r so now in this general equation we have y is equal to l by v plus d by v into xd so we can rewrite this equation in terms of the reflex ratio as r by 
r plus 1 x plus x d by r plus 1. So, these two are the most commonly used equations, the general equations for the rectifying or the enriching section. Now, in a similar way, by using the reboiler balance, we can write the general equation for stripping section. So, the general equation for stripping section is also very similar to this. Y is equal to L bar by V bar L bar by V bar into X minus W by V bar into XW. So, this is the uh, general equation for the stripping section. And this we will get by using the ba mass balance and the component balance from the stripping, uh, I mean the reboiler balance. Yeah. Okay. So, in, in your classes, what you usually do is you use these uh, operating uh, e line equations and you usually try to find the number of trays by a graphical method using Maccabithiel. So, this graphical method, it's uh, nothing like, uh, it's, uh, you know, we can take, you know, our x-axis and y-axis, which represents the uh, mole fractions. And we have our 45 degree line. And then we have our equilibrium curve. Okay. Now, so let's say XF is our feed, and this point XD represents our distillate, and this point XW represents the uh, mole fraction of the more volatile component in the residue. So, how you must you usually do uh, graphically is that we use this bay, uh, you know equation y is equal to r by r plus 1 x plus x d by r plus 1 is the equation for the rectifying section. And this uh, this line is represented by this. So, this line is of the form y is equal to mx plus c basically. So, where m is the slope and c is the constant, uh, constant which is the intercept. So, this intercept is basically xd by r plus 1 and this slope is basically r by r plus 1. Now, in a similar way, you will also uh, be able to find the operating line for a stripping section using the uh, formula y is equal to L bar by V bar to x minus, um, what was the formula? Yeah, v, uh, W by V bar into x W. So, uh, yeah, you can use this to find the stripping section. The operating line will go something like this and what you usually do is you connect the operating lines of the enriching section and the uh, stripping section with the equilibrium line like this. And basically what you do is you calculate the number of these steps. So let's say this is 1 this is 2, this is 3, this is 4 and this is 5. The number of steps that is required to cross from xd to xw. So, that uh, let's say as n is equal to 5 is the number of ideal stages or trays required in a distillation column. So, this is uh, one way that you do graphically for the Maccabithiel method. So, yeah. So, these are just some of the uh, basic concepts of uh, Maccabithiel method. Now, let's. Okay.
that right so there is one more term uh, you need to be familiarized with uh, while proceeding for the uh, numerical problems which is the feed line or the q line so there is one term which is called as q which is nothing but the fraction of liquid in the feed so the feed that you put inside the distillation column can be of five different types it could be subcooled liquid it could be saturated liquid then it could be a mixture of both liquid and vapor so liquid vapor mixture then it could be saturated vapor and it can also be superheated vapor so this q basically tells us how much uh, of your feed is liquid so when uh, your uh, you know feed is subcooled liquid this q will be greater than 1 and when your uh, uh, feed is saturated liquid this q will be 1 and when your uh, feed is a liquid vapor mixture it will be between 0 and 1 and when your feed is saturated uh, vapor q will be 0 and for superheated vapor it will be less than zero so this is uh, this is uh, something called as the q line or the feed line so this is also important when it comes to solving numerical questions so uh, if q is the fraction of liquid in the feed then normally you know 1 minus q can be the fraction of uh, vapor in your feed yeah so this q line will represent it graphically like this so we had the operating lines of the enriching section and the stripping section like this this q line will originate from xf and it will go like this normally and this uh, q line can be represented by using the uh, balances around the feed tray as y is equal to q by Q minus one into x minus x f by Q minus one. So this is the general equation or the equation representing this Q line. Yeah. So these are some of the uh, basics um, and mainly the basic general equations that you need to remember uh, while solving uh, problems from distillation. so let's uh, get to today's uh, questions for a distillation okay um so let's uh, go with the 2018 question so before we proceed uh, does, do, uh, is the basic concept of this distillation is it clear to everyone like do you have any particular uh, things that you want me to explain in mind or like 
do you have any doubts from the uh, things that we just uh, looked into just now uh, like feel free to interrupt me at any time like i'm more than happy to help is this uh, fine or like shall we proceed can anyone respond okay i assume uh, things are fine fine uh, so let's uh, get into this question so this is a question from 2018 get chemical engineering so binary distillation column is designed by Maccabi Thiel method to get a distillate mole fraction of 0.9. The enriching section operating line has an intercept with the y axis at 0.3 mole fraction. The ratio of liquid to vapor molar ratio in the enriching section is dash rounded off to three decimal places. So, this uh, you can have the uh, reference NPTEL lecture series for this concept from. Uh, lecture uh, 3 week 9 number of trays by Maccabi and Thiel for distillation mass transfer operations 1 by professor B Mandel department of chemical engineering IIT Guwahati so these videos are available for free in NPTEL website so you can uh, it, it's uh, but it's suggested that you uh, use make use of this uh, opportunities to uh, get the concepts more clear so let's just write uh, the things that they have given uh, to us, the data that they have given to us, they have given that Xd, which is the mole fraction of the more volatile component in the distillate, as 0.9. And they have also given us that the slope uh, or the intercept of the enriching operating line with the y axis is 0.3. So we just saw how this uh, en uh, enriching operating line intercepts the y-axis and how that y-axis is related to the general equation of the enriching section so that is 0.3 so for for an enriching section uh, we just uh, looked at the uh, you know general equation y is equal to r by r plus 1 x plus xd by r plus 1 so that intercept 0.3 is basically the intercept which is uh, available from the general equations so here this 0.3 is equal to xd by r plus 1 And then the slope is also, you know, r by r plus 1. And the other form of this equation will show us that the slope is also equal to L by V. So basically what we have to find here is L by V and it is equal to r by r plus 1 where r is the reflex ratio. So now all we have to do is substitute the values that we have here. So we have the value for xd which is 0.9, uh, we have the value for y and x, yeah, so we have xd by r plus 1 is equal to 0.3. So just substitute the values here, xd by r plus 1, xd is 0 0.9 and uh, we have 0 0.9 by r plus 1 is equal to 0 0.3 and we can solve this equation to find r which is 2. So, L by V is equal to R by R plus 1. Yeah. So, which is basically equal to 2 by 2 plus 1 or by 2 by 3 and this roughly comes to point zero point six six seven. So this is a straightforward question that uh, we can solve use, uh, using the concepts that we learned 
uh, while doing the Maccabetl graphically. Is this clear? Okay. Let's uh, move on to uh, other problems. So this is a question from 2017 gate. The composition of vapor entering a tray in a distillation column is 0.47. The average composition of the vapor leaving the tray is 0.52. All the compositions are expressed in mole fractions of the more volatile component. The Murphy efficiency based on the vapor phase rounded off to the nearest integer is dash percent. So, you can also find the NPTEL uh, lecture series for this in the NPTEL website done by Professor B. Mandel from IIT Guwahati. So, yeah, there are a few efficiencies uh, which we can measure. Basically, the efficiency of the tray or the efficiency of mass transfer that occurs in a distillation column. And one such efficiency is the Murphy efficiency. So, by definition, Let's take a tray and let's say it's the nth tray. So there will be liquid coming in, liquid and vapor coming in and going out. So let's say ln minus 1 is the liquid that is coming from n minus 1 tray and ln is the liquid that is going out from the nth tray. And you you will have vapor also as Vn plus 1 coming in and Vn going out of the nth tray. Their corresponding, uh, you know, compositions can be uh, represented as Yn for Vn, v, Yn plus 1 for Vn plus 1, Xn and Xn minus 1 for the liquid. Now, this is for a real case. Now, there is a, when you do it for an ideal case or the ideal stage, this Yn and this Xn of Vn and Ln will be in equilibrium. So, we can represent that as Yn star and Xn star. So, in ideal stages, the products leaving the nth tray are in equilibrium. So, Xn can be represented as Xn star and Yn can be represented as Yn star in ideal case. So, by definition, the Murphy efficiency is nothing but the change in composition in a real case by change in composition in the ideal case. So, a Murphy efficiency Em is equal to change in composition for a real tray or stage by change in composition for an ideal stage or tray. And if you want to represent it as in person into 100%. So, for a real stage, the change in composition or here we want it in the terms of vapor composition. So, change in vapor composition for a real stage is equal to Yn minus Yn plus 1. And similarly, when it comes to the ideal case, change in vapor composition for an ideal stage. So, here, yeah, the change in vapor composition for ideal stage is equal to yn star minus yn plus 1. So, yeah, the Murphy efficiency in terms of vapor phase composition is nothing but the change in composition for real case by change in composition for an ideal stage, which is basically yn 
minus y n plus 1 by y n star minus y n plus 1 into 100 percent. So, this is the Murphy efficiency uh, general equation in terms of vapor phase composition. Now, we can also write this similarly in liquid phase composition as x n minus 1 minus x n by x n minus 1 minus x n star into 100 percent and this is in terms of the liquid phase composition. So, here also the concept is same the Murphy efficiency is equal to change in uh, composition the liquid composition for a real stage by change in the liquid composition for the ideal stage. So, now we have been given a few data here. So, here y n is given as 0.53, y n plus 1 is given as 0.47 and y n star is given as 0.52. So, we just have to substitute these values in the vapor phase equation and we can find the Murphy efficiency by just direct substitution. So, Murphy efficiency E m is equal to 0.53 minus 0.47 by 0.52 minus 0.47 and this will come to 120 percent. Is this clear? Okay. Fine, let us uh, move on. Okay, so this is again a distillation question which was asked in gate 2015. Uh, so, a binary feed consisting of 25 mole percent liquid and 75 mole percent vapor is separated in a staged distillation column. The mole fraction of the more volatile component in the distillate product is 0.95. The molar flow rate of the distillate is 50 percent of the feed flow rate and the Mekaway TL method can be used to analyze the column. The Q line intersects the operating line of the enriching section at 0.35 and 0.5 on the xy diagram. The slope of the stripping section operating line up to one decimal place is dash. So, we have to find the slope of the stripping section which is basically L bar by V bar. So, let us see how to proceed with this question. So, let us uh, draw our distillation column. So, we have the feed F with, with the composition XF. We have the distillate D with its composition XD. And we have the uh, residue W with its composition W. So, it is given that the feed is 25 percent liquid. That means Q is equal to 0.25 and the mole fraction of the distillate is also given as 0.95 and the molar flow rate of the feed is twice that of the distillate. So, that means F is equal to 2D. Okay. So, they have also given us that the operating line of the enriching section intersects at intersects the Q line at 0.35 and 0.5. That means at the feed tray the x is equal to 0.35 and y is equal to 0.5. So, let us write the general equation for the enriching section. So, y is equal to r by r plus 1 into x plus x d by r plus 1. So, we have the values for x d, we have the values for x and y from the intersection, just have to substitute it to find r. 
So 0.5 is equal to r by r plus 1 into 0.35 plus 0.95 by r plus 1. So this is just direct substitution and solving this equation to find r. And we will, by solving this equation, we find that r is equal to 3. So r, which is the reflex ratio, is, is equal to L by D and we have L by D is equal to 3. So just rearranging it, we can write it as L is equal to 3D. Now let's take a condenser balance. So we have the distillate D, the liquid that is going inside back as L and V is the vapor. And the condenser balance V is equal to L plus D. So here we already have L is equal to 3D. So we just have to substitute V is equal to 3D plus D or V is equal to L plus D substitute for L as 3D and we get V is equal to 3D plus D which is 4D. So, feed is 25% liquid, that means 75% uh, vapor. So, we have Q is equal to 0 0.25. So, let's uh, take a feed tray balance. So, we have the feed incoming which is F, the liquid incoming and outgoing as L and L bar and V are V and B bar as the vapor uh, that is coming in and going out. So from these equations, we can write the equation. Um, wait a second. Yeah. So we can write the equation using L bar L and Q as L bar is equal to L plus QF and V bar is equal to V minus 1 minus Q into F. So this equation is this L bar equation. Just a second, sorry for the interruption. Sorry for that. Okay, so L bar is equal to L plus QF. So what this means is L bar, which is the liquid that is going out of the feed tray, is equal to L, which is the liquid that is coming into the feed tray plus Q into F, which is the fraction of liquid that is available in the feed tray. And similarly, we can write a balance for this V bar as well. So V bar, which is the vapor that is entering the feed tray is equal to V, which is the vapor that is exiting the feed tray minus one minus the fraction of vapor that is available in the feed. So, just substitute the values, we have L is equal to 3D, so L bar will be and we also have the value for F which is 2D. So just write this equation L bar in terms of D. So L bar will be, yeah, L bar will be 3D plus 0.25 into F and F is 2D. So L bar is equal to 3D plus 0.25 into 2D and we will get L bar is equal to 3.5D. Similarly, we can also write V is equal to 4D from the condenser balance. So uh, we can get an equation for V bar as well in terms of D as 0.25D. Now slope of the stripping section is equal to L bar by V bar. 
So this is what we need to find here L bar by V bar and this will be equal to 3.5D by 2.5D and we can cancel out these terms and we will get the final answer as 3.5 by 2.5 which is 1.5. So yeah, this is the uh, ratio of the liquid to uh, molar uh, molar uh, flow rate of the liquid to the vapor phase in the stripping section, which is equal to the slope of the stripping section. So these are like some of the uh, questions uh, that is uh, asked in the previous gate years, uh, and you you know you can see most of these questions rely on mass balance of uh, the distillation column. Uh, and the condenser and the reboiler as well and it depends on the general equation of these operating lines as well so these are some of the concepts you need to learn for uh, preparing for gate uh, especially in mass transfer and distillation any uh, doubts uh, on how we proceeded with this how we got the answer fine uh, that's about it for today so we saw we looked at uh, just to summarize what we did today we looked at few of the concepts with regards to distillation and relative volatility we looked at how we can uh, you know, graphically uh, represent the macabre tl method the operating lines for the enriching and the stripping se section in graphical form and how to find the uh, number of trays uh, in graphical way and we also looked at uh, three questions from previous year gate which uh, which relied mainly on the general equations for these operating lines so yeah that's about it for today and uh, yeah thank you for joining and if anyone has any doubt please uh, you can unmute yourself and speak or type in the chat box it's up to you so yeah that's about it for today and i hope this section was uh, somewhat useful and you were able to get something from out of this section and yeah thank you and see you all next monday